at least watch it myself uh, after, but uh, there could also be some other thing. Do you like uh, uh, publish it somewhere or? Uh, we have a, a YouTube channel where we've uh, recorded okay. previous uh, uh, seizures. So if you'd like it published there, then absolutely, let's do it. Yeah, let's see if, uh, if it's worth it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we will see what happens. So, um, OK, let me start then. So of course, uh, you know, my name is um, Peter Strömberg. And uh, yeah, I've been calling myself and being called PES for very long. Uh, so. That's a handle I use. Uh, um, so if you call me Pez, uh, I will I will know you're talking to me. Uh, so uh, I would love uh, 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 connection requests from uh, Clusurians uh, uh, at, uh, at LinkedIn, of course. And I also talk a bit about uh, Calva and Closure stuff on Twitter, even if there's stuff there as well. So. You might not want to see, but it's up to you. So, um, yeah, I have a, a family here sleeping, uh, kind of a uh, pretty big family for being a Swedish family. Very, very nice with lots of kids. Um, and I also for very long have done coding as the thing I do when I want to when I want to enjoy myself. Uh, these days, very much so. Uh, and um, the only other thing I do uh, is I sharpen knives as well. <laughs> I like that. Uh, kitchen knives. So, uh, yes. And uh, of course, uh, to to get food on the table, I uh, I'm hacking health at Piloxa, which is uh, I would say it's still a startup. But uh, uh, yeah, somewhere between startup and scale up, uh, we're trying to help people with uh, managing their medication schedule, how medications fits into their lives. And, and we are using uh, uh, mainly a, a mobile app built with uh, uh, closure script and React Native uh, for that. I thought I would uh, start today with. Uh, talking a bit about uh, Visual Studio Code. Now, of course, people may know when you were, a few of you have used Calva, so you, but anyway, I think it's uh, it's uh, it's something, uh, it's important to, to why Calva is, of course, uh, that, that thing. And then we could uh, have a look a bit about uh, uh, on, on Calva and what, what it, uh, it can do. And then talk a bit about why Calva, uh, why it is maintained, I would say. Why it is, why, 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 it, why it exists, I mean, that's so simple. Uh, I needed something uh, better than what was on, on, on VS Code those days. But uh, I want to talk a bit about why uh, Brand and I are working so uh, um, so, so much with, with uh, bringing Calva and improving on Calva. And also a bit about, uh, how how the, the workflow is for when developing in Calva. And maybe I can intrigue some of you to open up that box and, and, and see how easy it is to hack hack in Calva. And even if I put like a question thing at the end, I would love if you interrupt me uh, during and ask. So maybe we can make make it more of a um, of a discussion than than just me broadcasting, but it's up to you. But I will, I will certainly welcome questions. Um, yeah, so um, Visual Studio Code. Then uh, it is not just my uh, favorite editor; it is a lot of people's uh, favorite editor, ed editor, and it's growing. I don't know anything actually about uh, the numbers, but it is it is really taking my market share. Uh, so uh, that much I know. And it is so for a reason, uh, really, it's really easy, easy to use. Uh, and no one needs to 
figure how do you select text, paste text, type text, search, stuff like that. Everything just works like it does in any word processor or everything, anything else you might have been, been using. Uh, and one thing also making uh, this code particularly easy to use, it's like it's, it's using this uh, command palette. I uh, think maybe Sublime brought to the table, I don't know which, where it started, but anyway, it's, it makes discovering uh, commands and features in, in, in VS Code super, uh, super easy. And even when, when extensions uh, uh, add commands and stuff, all that was also very easy to, uh, easy to find. And it all, all the time displays um, the keyboard shortcuts for you. So you can, you can just pay attention to them and then you can, you can be a keyboard, keyboard uh, wielding um, developer. And also the same command palette uh, really uh, gives a lot of power uh, uh, to VS Code. It is actually uh, more of a prompt. So if I use command shift P uh, to summon it, it starts with that uh, greater than sign making the commands. I and mean, if I, I can filter commands super easily and uh, let's see. It will, yeah, it will match and find uh, whatever I, I look for. And but if I don't have anything at the start there, then it is a file finder with the same ease, or maybe I don't know. Same easy to 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 find in any file, um, and if I, I don't know in this kind of file. Uh, no, let's uh, can see if can if I open up a file like this, and then yes, so it finds the symbols, for instance, in 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 the file, and if I do that, it finds symbols globally. In in, uh, in the workspace, uh, so yeah, so it's very very the command palette prompt this makes makes things very powerful, and the search replace uh, is also super uh, powerful. So if I search for something, I can I don't know. So it displays, I don't know if you see it, directly, but it displays very, very succinctly here. What, what is uh, I'm searching for? What, what would happen if I hit the replace button? I can easily remove stuff from the search uh, uh, content. I can search, of course, for whole words, um, uh, regexes, uh, everything uh, uh, like that. I can, I can, uh, remove uh, or filter out, filter in, which is files I want to search. So it's very, for a very long time, before Calva had uh, uh, this closure LSP uh, uh, under the hood, uh, there was, you know, no find symbol and stuff like that, uh, and find references in, in Calva. But it, it didn't, it was okay, actually, because this search and replace was is so well, very easy and powerful to use. Of course, it has uh, the, the multi cursors, uh, very also very easy to uh, easy to use. Um, I can, I don't know, if we're on this uh, here and we select it like that, and I just, just do command D, and then I have both of them, and, and now I can, of course. Uh, update everywhere it is. Uh, same thing there. Made a lot of made a lot refactoring commands within the file. Uh, um, not nece as necessary. Now we have uh, uh, refactoring, and I'm super happy for that. But but it's um, uh, with code like out of the box makes a lot of that things very easy. Uh, the Git integration is 
awesome was uh, uh, before uh, even Microsoft bought uh, GitHub. Uh, and there is this super uh, uh, nice extension uh, to Git called GitLens. I don't know if it compares uh, with uh, Magit fully, but it's very, it is it's somewhere up there, I would say, somewhere there. And this GitLens uh, uh, developer, he was actually, so he's part of the VSCO team uh, today, which makes, has made the um, extension, VSCO extension builder community uh, very nice because now like we have one of our men inside uh, the team embedded uh, that has really made uh, a lot of difference between uh, for, for how we can communicate uh, with the VSCO team. So that's really, really nice. Sync of settings and things in VS Code is, is totally, totally uh, amazing. Uh, so, and it's, you can, you can, it's very granular in the setting, what you think, what, what you don't think. Whatever. Say I changed the, the um, theme. So I use a light theme here. And then I go to some other machine. Here I have another uh, uh, Windows machine uh, that I'm remote desktop in it too. And it is like logged in, logged in with the same GitHub account. Now I should should be picking up uh, this uh, this uh, theme change. There it comes. So uh, for me, I, I have like separate uh, computers when I work and when I do uh, the for fun stuff. Uh, but a lot of these uh, settings they are like my preferences, so it's super nice to always have like the same settings regardless of which computer I, I, I pick up. It uh, syncs extensions, uh, uh, settings of course, um, and more, yeah. So it's uh, it, it makes for a very unified uh, experience. Um, live share, I don't know. Dave, you mentioned mob programming, if it was live share they were using. Um, but anyway, we I mean, I know people are are using uh, live share, even also with uh, with uh, Calva. I, I haven't used it very much my, myself. But besides testing it, it's, it's sure some parts of Calva works in live share and something like that. But it's, uh, it's very... Uh, Nice, of course, to be able to work in a like Google Docs way. Uh, it sounds right. Code. I'm not exactly sure. Kailash, you were there, like in March. I don't recall it. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure Peter, sorry. Yeah, uh, but uh, we have uh, a friend of uh, Calva who is heavily, heavily uh, using uh, LiveShare, and he has he has provided. Uh, uh, several PRs uh, to to make Calva work well together with. So when you use the REPL, uh, you, you use the REPL together as well. Uh, something that also imp improved a lot when we when we made the, the uh, output window a regular a regular um, VS Code editor uh, uh, view, and then it got live share automatically. Also, VS Code is amazing how it like restores state. So if I just kill uh, uh, VS Code, uh, it will remember everything. So unsaved files will will they, they are safe. Uh, uh, even the selections I have are safe. So it's uh, right. I mean, it's, I start VS Code again. You can just continue working where you were. Um, it's a, it's a Pretty, pretty amazing. And also together with, maybe I use it more than many because I have often used um, code, code when I work with, 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 uh, with Clojure, I often use the extension host. I'm using development version in development of Calva. 
and then maybe I change something and then I just need to restart everything. And uh, so I, maybe I restart it uh, more often uh, than, than many, but it's uh, super, super nice. Also very, very easy to build extensions for it. It has a beautiful API, uh, very, uh, uh, very well uh, designed uh, API, uh, I would say. So it's, uh, it's like it has these obvious uh, extension uh, points. So it's, uh, it's easy to get started with, uh, uh, with extending uh, this code and then super easy to, to, um, uh, to continue doing it. And also it's, there's a very, very nice community uh, there. We can get help from each other. Are you able to write so, those extensions in Clojure script? Uh, say again? I said, are you able to write those extensions in Clojure script? Yeah, certainly, certainly. It's um, it's it's Electron uh, and a node like uh, you know, so you can use uh, you can use uh, anything that compiles to JavaScript. I would say as uh, um, to develop. Calva is written partly in the, in, in Clojure script, and I know Clover, the chlorine for VS Code, is uh, written entirely. In in, uh, in closure script, and he's also leveraging uh, uh, Workdude's uh, Sky. Uh, I don't know if you uh, that's how you pronounce it, but the small uh, closure interpreter in, in, in there. So it's uh, yeah, definitely you can use uh, closure script. Uh, it's uh, very you can you can open a lot of uh, these code projects, and 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 at least my machine doesn't. It doesn't have a protest, it just does it. So that was the reason that where, why, I, why I actually had to, to uh, create Calva to begin with, because I was using a small MacBook Air 12 inch. I was a product owner at that place, so I, I didn't have a developer machine. Uh, so it couldn't really uh, handle Emacs and it certainly protested against uh, IntelliJ. But uh, VS Code was no problem. Uh, so it, it is uh, it is Electron, but I think it's, it's reasonably lightweight. Actually, very stable. I don't think VS Code has ever crashed on me. Uh, but, uh, just I don't know, Brandon, has it ever crashed on you? Are you talking about VS Code itself? Yeah, VS Code. <clears throat> Uh, yes, but that was only because I'm using some kind of odd Linux distribution <laughs> that yeah, the Microsoft distribution didn't play well with. But uh, but other other than that, no, it's it's pretty reliable. Yeah, yeah, it, it is nice, and and it's there. When you started, it's just there. It's there. there's no like start time. I don't know how they do it. The thing about uh, 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 it though that it is also hard to extend. <laughs> Sometimes some some things uh, with this API uh, they have which keeps uh, the user interface very um, consistent to the users. So as an extension developer, when you extend uh, VS, uh, VS Code, like if you're a, if you you do an extension for a language like we are doing with with Calva, then lots of things are like common, like how it should be handled in any language. And VS Code makes it very easy to do that. In some other uh, extension environments, you need to like mimic uh, some kind of, but you don't need to do that in, in, in VS Code, but it also limits uh, uh, what you can do. And of course, even if the VS Code team is very responsive, listen uh, uh, to, to requests, they only have so many people, so much time. They have their backlog. They care a lot about uh, the design of the API. Things can take a really long time. I have a feature uh, that I wanted. I saw this um, talk, uh, I don't remember his name, but the guy who made ProtoRepl for, for uh, Atom. Jason something um, is his name, but he showed ProtoRepl and how how it in sh can show like structured data in line uh, when uh, when you get results uh, back 
and I have wanted to do that for, for VS Code ever since. Um, there is a ticket uh, for it, accumulating so many uh, likes and comments and stuff like that, but it still, still hasn't happened. And another thing that I have spent a lot of time uh, with trying to do is trying to get power in for uh, smart mode to, to work uh, in, 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 VS, in VS Code and in Kava. But I, I have I failed and much better programmers than I have tried as well. So there is a, a power in for extension for VS Code, but just smart mode is, uh, is not really uh, possible. And some other uh, editor environments that is also super hard to get power in for in. I think that was one of the reasons that uh, Sean LeBron actually more or less discontinued his work with power infer because he saw he couldn't get it out uh, uh, on, on the most important, uh, some of the most important places. So yeah, it's, uh, well, that's, uh, you have to deal with that, I guess. And we do whatever we can, we do, uh, of course, that's uh, great. That brings us to Calva, uh, I would say, unless some, but you can ask whatever uh, you want. Uh, yeah, so Calva was uh, released uh, three years ago. I was uh, kind of surprised. <laughs> I, I think I started to think about when Kailash had asked me to come and uh, talk about Calva here with you. Uh, I was starting to think how long has, because it felt like I, it was like very recently but it's actually three years. Uh, so I found I found a post on Clojureverse like I do in April 2018 when I tell people, hey, I made Calva. Uh, uh, I also tell people that, that I didn't know what I was doing um, uh, back, to, back then because I didn't, but uh, that has improved. Uh, so we're, I'm still, uh, with it, and since October 2019, uh, uh, Brandon uh, joined. I think it was uh, 28th of October, something like that, that he joined Brandon. And that's super, super good because Brandon is uh, as passionate as I am with um, uh, with Kawa. And yeah, we were uh, together uh, uh, a lot, not so much pair programming and stuff like that, but we, but we plan, I should say, and and discuss and try out things together, and yeah, we are like we see things both the same way, like with how we think about users and and their feedback and uh, stuff like that. So, like, so it's very, it's very uh, comfortable for, for me to know that Brandon is like at the help desk uh, because I think I know he's doing it very much the same way I would do it my, myself. So, so that's super, super nice. But, but, also, but otherwise we, we see things very differently. So we can challenge each other a lot uh, for the benefit of Calva and the users, I think. So that's, uh, that's uh, super, super nice. Uh, the team has had uh, more people that has like been part of, of the team. Kevin Albrecht, uh, I still, he has at least, he's not said that, you know, I'm totally even. He has other things uh, going on. So he's not uh, very active right now, uh, but there have been more uh, uh, people involved. And of course, Calva was, was actually another uh, this code extension that I started with. It, it was abandoned. So as far as I could tell, it was abandoned, even if the last thing the maintainer said was, it's not abandoned. But uh, it, 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 it was, I took that uh, uh, one, because that was the only one that worked with ClojureScript and supported uh, enough of the workload for me. I took that one and added the few PRs that hadn't been pulled on, on uh, Visual Clojure and packaged that. And that was what uh, started Kawa. So very little uh, left of the code from that uh, extension still in Kawa. 
But uh, if you look in the contributions uh, uh, part of uh, the, the repository, you will still see uh, Steve's uh, CN's name there. But uh, I never spoken to this guy, never uh, had a conversation uh, with him. I think he must have quit uh, closure long ago. But anyway, there it is. So what can Calva do? Uh, yeah, it can do most things these days. Actually, that's a bit uh, amazing uh, that that uh, it has uh, grown like that to be. It is like a complete um, development environment. Uh, so, so that so that's nice. We still have some holes in, in the closure development support, maybe, but uh, but you see it like as a general development environment uh, so together with VS Code. Yeah. How do you, what, what channels do you get feedback for Calvo from? Uh, so yeah, good uh, question. So the, the main main feedback channel might actually be GitHub issues uh, still. So, I mean, we get a lot of uh, the, the input and stuff not working, of course, uh, we are GitHub issues. I think I would say it maybe it competes with the Slack uh, Calvo channel. Uh, what do you, what do you say, uh, Brandon? Um, yeah, I would say that's, that's correct. Um, yeah. quite a, quite a few people in the, uh, Calvus Slack channel and it, it's, you know, there's something, something going on in there pretty much every day. Yeah. And a lot of, um, we get a lot of like these nice, uh, just, uh, sharing on kind of feedback from, uh, the reviews, uh, section of uh, the VS Code marketplace as well. I think we're up at like some 36, 37 reviews so far and all of them are five uh, star reviews and people just like take the opportunity to to uh, um, love Bombas that way. So that's, uh, that's also a very nice. I still get very, uh, very, every time I see a notification on the phone that there's a new review I always think that this will be the first uh, uh, bad review or something, <laughs> uh, but it's still uh, it's a hundred percent streak so far. So it's um, it's uh, really nice. Uh, and while while speaking about this uh, feedback, and uh, we have this uh, Calva uh, channel which is very active on on uh, Clojure and Slack, and we get so we get a lot of feedback and I think I can count, I think three times uh, people, someone has been like rude or anything uh, uh, there. So it's a kind of amazing community. Uh, we have everyone is, is uh, so, so even when things are totally not working, they're still very, very uh, nice and, and it's easy. It, it's easy to motivate yourself to to help people in that environment. So that's that's super. Um, yeah. So in it's, let's say it's a com complete development environment, and of course the main feature that it had already this vicious visual closure thing uh, that I picked up to begin with. Of course, it's supported interactive uh, programming. And then we have built on that. So today it, it is it is very competent in, in, uh, in supporting that, uh, uh, I would say. And we have these custom REPL commands that you can go kind of crazy with. These will send um, and evaluate uh, snippets of code to your, uh, uh, to the REPL. And you have uh, a very simple way to pick things from, from, uh, uh, from the file and, uh, and include that in, 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 in your expression. So that's, um, there's a, a lot you can do to, to, to support uh, your workflow and you can, you can select if you have like a full stack project, if you have both a closure REPL and a closure script REPL, say, you can, you can target the, uh, the commands to, 
to uh, a particular REPL, a particular namespace, and you can uh, yeah, you can support uh, about a lot of uh, your workflow that way. And if you wanna you wanna say you're in a defin uh, in function definition and you want like the function name and use that you maybe you want to call it i mean that's uh that's uh at least for me you know, when i i mean this function i want to call this function then you can use uh, uh this variable inside your um custom command snippet and you can bind uh keyboard shortcuts to uh, to these commands so it's um, yeah, pretty nice actually. Of course, of course I know, but it's it has it has structural editing support in, in the form of of par edit mostly. There is like some kind of um, flavor of uh, uh, of par edit. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, no par infer there, but mostly uh, um, uh, par edit, and it might be one of the most complete. Power edit the implementations uh, out there, so it's it has everything. You can raise exp expressions. You can drag expressions. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Extend selection. Maybe one thing that's uh, uh, also worth mentioning, like you have a lot of uh, selection uh, commands. So every navigation part navigation moment uh, command has like the corresponding selection command. If you hold shift at the same time, you will, you will select. But that will also add to the selection stack. So if you so you will grow your uh, selection and then you can shrink back your selection, whichever of these selection commands you use. Um, I don't know uh, how, uh, what's the case uh, with other uh, part in, um, implementation if they do that, but at least the Calva does that. So it's, um, I use it a lot. And also when you drag, uh, so this is bound to uh, option up and down arrow, uh, the dragging. And if you do it in let boxes or in, in, uh, uh, in maps or anything, it will drag the, the pairs. So. You can just reorder stuff uh, uh, very easily. There, I, I still have on my to do to make it work in in the cond and asus and some other places as well. Uh, uh, so it's like kind of um, so since I added it, I was surprised how much I use it actually. Just uh, this dragging. But anyway, uh, it's, a, it's a very complete and uh, part of it. And this, this uh, uh, page that I know people use actually to, to tell people what part of it is because it's, uh, it's visual and easy to, to follow. Um, probably still unique uh, for Calva is we have this uh, focus on on making it um, a very welcoming uh, thing uh, for new closureians uh, to to try to try closure out, uh, especially then if they are already VS Code users. So we have put a lot of effort into making it as easy as possible to to start uh, uh, with closure on Calva. So this getting started repo. You can watch uh, me introduce it here. It is a command that lives in the command palette, and it is fired up to getting started REPL. And it will start, uh, open three files for you, for you and then start the REPL uh, on them. So one of them uh, will try to teach you uh, the basics of uh, interactive programming in Calva. So the basic uh, evaluation evaluation commands, one will introduce uh, power edit and one will actually try to teach you closure. And uh, it is not uh, finished yet, but you can actually use it to start learning uh, uh, closure. 
and then you will do that in an interactive way using using the REPL and try stuff out. So um, I will uh, I will show you this one because uh, this one is like central in in this why we are working with Calva. Um, yeah, so I think this is just saying the same thing as we see here. So here we can also see that Calva, of course, builds on the amazing stuff that other people have built. So it's uh, it's not only that Calva has, I don't know, uh, 50 more contributors uh, to the code. Some of us has contributed more than others, but anyway, it's, it's a, since it's so easy, a lot of people just send a PR or something like that. But also, of course, so many open source uh, hours put in by others uh, started very much, of course, on top of uh, Cider and Repl. But lately, uh, Closure LSP matured. Uh, anyway, I, thought, I think actually Calva had part in, in that, uh, uh, that it matured so quickly because uh, Brandon started to to uh, uh, implement uh, uh, integrate closure LSP in Calva, and then it, it worked super closely with uh, Eric Dallo, who is, I would say, the right, today the main uh, closure LSP uh, developer. Snow, I don't know his real name right now. Uh, who created Closure LSP uh, to start with. He's still there, which is also, also very nice. And I think Brandon, Eric, uh, Bork, Dude, and Snowy uh, worked very hard together to, to put LS, uh, Closure LSP on uh, the CLJ condo wheels. So uh, it like uses the same um, AST, if you like, as uh, say the Conda uses for its linting and everything. So it's very, uh, it's very uh, high precision in, in everything Closure LSP does. And the way the LSP protocol uh, works, which Brandon knows a lot more about than I do. Uh, but anyway, from my perspective, the first time I experimented with it uh, was like, I just like, Started closure LSP and called the function in in uh, uh, in the VS Code API, and all uh, closure LSP features just poured up in 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 the in my editor, and I had refactorings and could uh, find references and and uh, do all that kind. Then, of course, it was much more work than that that uh, Brandon put in. But on some level, it is, this LSP protocol is. It's uh, super, yeah. It's uh, it's, uh, it's one of the most amazing texts I've seen. Almost as amazing as Cider and Repl. And Repl is uh, also kind of it's it is and Repl is a sort of an of a precursor in, in a way to to LSP. But it's much more. It's much more. Um, um, what would you say at at will on demand? I wanna. I want to perform this operation, then I send it to NREPL and it will perform that operation uh, in the rep in the REPL for me, and then it will send it back, uh, send me back the results, and I will take care of the result and uh, do something with it. The LSP is much more automatic, <laughs> like it, it you implement the LSP uh, API and then then any LSP enable editor will. Uh, uh, we'll just start behave uh, and get that, those features. Uh, I don't know, Brandon, if uh, uh, you have, you could tell us a bit about the, the LSP. Um, I mean, I think you said uh, a pretty good summary of it. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of features came out of the box, um, but some things required some work, like you said. Um, certain things didn't play nice with other parts of Calva. And, and so in some places we kind of pick and choose what we um, delegate to the to a REPL connection if there is one and what we delegate to Closure LSP. Um, 
<clears throat> but yeah, that's that's the uh, that's the gist of it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, also, uh, yeah. If we just plug it in uh, the, uh, the LSP, then we would have like double double reports on stuff. So both uh, our end repl uh, uh, code and the LSP would like report on the same symbols and stuff like that. So that got to be crazy. You couldn't have it like that. So that's part of why we had to like disable some of uh, the and REPL. Uh, but it's also like um, a superset. Some things uh, that the static and analysis can't do for you, but you can with the dynamic analysis that and REPL has. So then we can, when we get the answers from both of them, we can pick, okay. So we, we now, in this case, we, we, we use the NREPL answer instead of uh, the LSP. There's a very nice uh, middleware uh, uh, architecture there that you can, you can uh, do this kind of stuff. There's some part of it where we need to actually do double work because we haven't figured out how to, how to stop that, but uh, there's nothing that the user notices. It just, it's just the brand and the me that knows that the kittens are dying. Um, you can see here that we have like static uh, code information coming from closure SP and that we have dynamic code uh, uh, information coming from there. The debugger is using, I don't think it's using closure LSP as such, it's using CG Condo for some of its uh, the analysis it, it needs, uh, but it's, it is uh, actually the CIDR debugger that uh, Brand, Brandon did that work uh, with implementing the debugger in, in Kawa. Uh, and of course the linting comes from Celia Kondo uh, as well. So, and at, at the, so VS Code comes always like, it has like built in extensions for most languages, including uh, Clojure. So if you, if you don't install any closure extension, you will still have uh, syntax highlighting for closure and to some extent, I don't, not much of it, but a bit of the indenting is there. Um, and it, it knows how to select uh, closure symbols when you double click and a bit of those things are there already built in. But with Calva, we have, we are, we are replacing that. So we have like a copy of that um, TM language grammar uh, in, in Galva. And then we have um, uh, improved on it and adapted it uh, a lot. So that's the reason we need uh, to, to have it in, in, in Calva. But otherwise, uh, then of course, Calva adds the rest of it uh, of its own. And the formatter in Calva is still uh, only supporting, uh, um, I don't know if you pronounce that, CMJ FMT, closure format. Let's say, we, let's call it closure format. Uh, so uh, it's still using, only, uh, supporting only closure format. There's no reason actually we couldn't also support other formatters, uh, but it's, uh, uh, it's a it's an amount of work that needs to be uh, done uh, to, to do that. Also, the, the closure format we're using is an, kind of an old fork of uh, uh, closure format uh, uh, that I forked two years ago or may, maybe more. Um, so it's uh, I'm starting trying to rebase on the on the new stuff, uh, but that is also work going on. Uh, um, this par edit I mentioned, uh, we have rainbow brackets and stuff like that, and indenting, and all that is uh, supported by what I don't know, I call it like a closure document uh, or cursor document in, in the code. Uh, and these documents are, they are, what do you say, like, uh, like a string, say it is a string, and that string has uh, it's object oriented, so it has some some um, 
uh, methods on it. So it, it like implements a full document model. So you can change you can change the text in this uh, string. You can insert text. You can find text in it. You can uh, uh, you can delete text and stuff like that on this uh, on this document uh, model. And <clears throat> it it is also a two way mirror. This document. So it's um, it uh, every change you do to a to a VS Code uh, document, uh, closure document, is mirrored down uh, in, in in one of these closure documents, and all changes you do to the closure documents are mirrored up to to uh, uh, to, to the VS Code editor. So that is how Parit it works. We yeah, Parit actually works on this uh, on this uh, string, this uh, like um, um, the, that representation, and that and then it happens in in the editor. So we have had uh, this Parit it hooked on a completely other uh, uh, web based editor as well, because it's uh, it, it's agnostic to to what kind of uh, editor it is. Living in, you need to just hook the editor up on this on this mirror, um, <clears throat> and yeah. So I want to show you a bit uh, more about this uh, uh, this uh, cursor and uh, closure document uh, uh, later because I, I I find that part of developing Calva extra extra fun. So any. Uh, question. Yeah, actually, actually, we haven't. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, on my way from here. We haven't looked at this uh, getting started repl yet. So as we said, um, it is in the command path here. So if I tell it fire up the getting started repl, in my case, it will ask me if I want to keep. I, I will create new files this time. So it promised us to open up these three files for us and start uh, the REPL. And there it is. And this doesn't take, you don't need to install closure uh, or lining in on your computer to have this happening. Java is, is everything, is all that is uh, needed. So it takes a bit longer than it does for me. If you're, if you're just like installing Kala into VS Code and then start this command, because it, it will take it a while to bring down stuff from Maven, but otherwise, that this is actually what you do. So that that's our steps to 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 get the closure Apple in VS Code uh, for a new user. To fire up this command, and this happens. And then, uh, was did you follow that? I can also tell you that the reason we can do this is Spork dude. Again, it's, it's always Spork dude. Uh, he has made this uh, depths CLJ uh, um, uh, um, Java program. He has written it in Clojure, of course. But anyway, that that one uh, totally implements all of the uh, tools depths. Uh, uh, closure uh, command line interface, so you can you can send a, a this step CLA, uh command exactly the same arguments as you send to to the closure uh, command line interface. So you can use that instead of uh, the closure, and that's what we do. So we bundle we bundle this uh, uh, as a jar uh, with Calva, and then we fire it up. Uh, so that's how, how that's how it happens. But anyway, this one tries to to get you started with the most important thing when you start with closure uh, uh, development in your editor. It is this interactive programming. It is this uh, evaluation of things. So we have uh, tried to make uh, these commands really accessible. Uh, uh, from the keyboard, so it's Alt or Option. Can, okay, option is easier to say. So Option Enter to to evaluate the top level form. 
deafens and defs and stuff like that. Uh, so if I do that there, then I will define uh, this function. So we won't read all this text, but that's what it instructs you to do. And also, I think, yeah, uh, Calvin may be one of the first editors to do this, but inside a comment, which is where many closure coders uh, start developing new uh, things, uh, we are considering it as a new top level um, uh, context. So if you to press uh, option enter here, it will actually evaluate that top level form uh, you are on. So if I would So if I do that, and then I do that. So it's very easy to, to uh, work inside your uh, rich comment forms. Uh, and to evaluate just um, one form, you have the cursor somewhere beside it, this form. So Calva has this a notion of something it calls the current form. And it has some heuristics to figure out which is the current form. Uh, but on some level, it is just the form where the cursor either is in, if in case of it's a symbol, or if it's beside, in case of it's, uh, uh, it's either a symbol or, or a list of some kind. So if I do control enter, I will evaluate uh, the current form. So I can stand on this side, on this form, and do it as well. Um, and yeah, so like that. And if I do alt enter to define that one, of course I can stand in the middle of foo here and do it as well. And then one thing that I found in CIDR uh, was uh, that it can evaluate in the currently enclosing form up to the cursor. So say I have this structure here and this function defined. And then I have this thread last thing here. And I can, of course, in this case, I can do control enter to, to, to evaluate the current form, but I can't do that here. Right? But then I can do control option enter to evaluate up to the cursor. So then I can, can uh, uh, see what's happening in my thread very easily. Um, so, yeah, and you also reach into to uh, Java. I don't think actually it should work navigating there. I saw the other day that I couldn't. I don't know. I might have experimented a bit too much with uh, the Java installation on my machine, but that should actually also work. So you can navigate and look into the uh, Java code uh, or source code. Um, there is also a debugger. Maybe this uh, example is a bit too too uh, simple to burn to the debugger, but here we try to teach uh, people that the debugger is there at least. So if there is a control alt I, I think it is, then I will oh. tell me which one it is. Should be that one, yeah. Uh, so then I will evaluate this uh, uh, function and also instrument it for debugging. And now if I will uh, call this uh, uh, function, it will uh, open it up in, in, the, in the debugger. And then I can see the local uh, variables there. And where is the... And I can step inside here. And now it should, of course, blow up because that's where the bug was in this case. Um, so, yeah, we have a, 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 a debugger uh, there. Very useful in some uh, situations, uh, I would say. And to 
uninstrument it. All you do is evaluate it in the normal way, and then then you can call it without it stopping in the debugger. There are also some other uh, uh, explicit uh, things you can put into functions to put breakpoints there and stuff like that. Brandon knows much more about this because he's the one who built this uh, on top of uh, the side of the debugger. Um, here, if I evaluate uh, this, now everything will stop working because now uh, the REPL is uh, busy trying to um, realize that uh, sequence. Then you can interrupt it. Uh, now we have the REPL uh, back at our command. So I would say I know there's a big difference from we re released this great and started REPL than from before that, because like the, the level of support questions we got just right raised because now they don't ask these things, things anymore. So it, uh, it really, I would say it really works uh, for its purpose to to get people started without having uh, to ask uh, uh, about it. I see it like a, the tip of the iceberg. I don't know if that's an expression in English. It is. You recognize? Yeah. So every time I get a question like that uh, in, in some of the support channels, I wonder how many had this problem and didn't ask how many gave up at this point. So that's that's one of the reasons why you want why you want to raise this uh, um, the level of uh, of uh, of the kind of questions you get because if you know if you get if you get questions at the next level then you know the iceberg is this much less of the iceberg below because much more people have started to figure out how they can evaluate stuff then they have reasons to to continue but before they have tried it, they don't know what they are missing. So it's very easy to put it away if it doesn't seem to work. So, so that's, um, uh, uh, yeah, that's how I see it. This also tries to teach you uh, some, some of the um, power edit commands. So uh, Calva, I would say Calva is not really opinionated software. It's not one of those actually, except here. Uh, of it, we really, really want people to use uh, uh, Power Edit in strict mode to to uh, uh, to protect them from from deleting and this, and, and and breaking the structure. So here we even call the other mode uh, Caveman mode. You can uh, switch it off with this button here. Do you see it? I have some. Zoom stuff here, so we can remove it. Yeah. So here, if you, you can toggle it, now it's in this caveman mode, and now it's in strict mode. In strict mode, it won't delete stuff, as you may, you guys maybe are used to if you're using uh, uh, power edit. Uh, but if then in this mode, of course, sometimes you want to delete something. You know what you're doing. Uh, then it's as easy as you just use option backspace in this case. Then now you have broken the structure, but uh, you do it uh, uh, on purpose, really. And if I don't, if I toggle this one to Cayman mode, of course, now I don't uh, get the protection. Now I can just delete that. Uh, Yeah, but as I showed you before, it has lots of these. I can raise, um, I can, um, I can drag. Like that. So we don't have a let box here, but I could show you how. Let's make ourselves a let box.
So now if I drag from here, I can move it to sit there. Um, yeah, and uh, this is this goes on. We have also like a dedicated uh, part. It's very short here. I, we could probably build a bit on that, but I'm, I'm leaning towards that it should be kept a bit uh, short. We have this guide uh, online uh, where they can. But if anyone wants to contribute uh, uh, more to this uh, part of guide, it's, 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 it's easy as going to this repository and, uh, and file a PR. Because this is where the files are pulled from when you use this command. So it's, uh, uh, that's how it works. And here we have a, the closure guide then. Let me evaluate this file. So, and this is, as I said, uh, kind of a big thing. So it's uh, so far 2,500 lines uh, of code and it's still not, uh, uh, finished. I hope to get uh, some time during my summer vacation to to uh, get this to some kind of finished uh, uh, state. But it still has a lot of the uh, fundamentals. You can start uh, learning uh, closure uh, this way. And I would love if you tried uh, this and also tried to introduce uh, new people to closure using this uh, and gave uh, gave us feedback about uh, how, how it how it works kind of a lot of people have looked at it and and see that I'm not lying at least about closure in, 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 in this I don't actually st I still see myself a bit as a closure beginner so writing this uh, guide has been very uh, rewarding for myself because I have been forced to actually learn more about the fundamentals uh, of closure to, to be able to to write this. I really hope that this one will uh, contribute to to uh, making it easier to uh, onboard new closureians. So, uh, any questions about this before I we continue? Just. I don't have any questions, but I, I'm a huge fan of the, the getting started REPL and that's how I've started learning closure. So thank you for getting the work into making this work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. The, yeah. Yeah. I, I love to hear that. That was, uh, that was, uh, you made my day. That's super. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know where to, uh, where, where to go. Uh, it's, it's, it's in the bottom of this, these files, you have uh, the repository there where you can. If you see something that you think should be should be there or it's, it's wrong or whatever. Um, good. Yeah, I, I just want to say that that the guide is, is awesome. You did great work with that because it kind of came out of nowhere. Like suddenly we, you know, we were working on different things. And usually I know if you're doing something and suddenly you just had this PR with these big guides that you were writing. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, this is awesome because we had talked about ways of helping beginners and, and guiding people better um, so that they, they would not have, you know, bad habits starting out or, or rather have, have good habits starting out with things that people don't, don't pick up on right away. And this is the perfect solution to that, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for telling me that. It, it, I really agree. Also, for me, it came a bit out of uh, of the blue as well. Uh, in, in a way, it was something that someone said about the jacking command. I think it was Alex Miller actually that that said that. You know, we had like this debate about the jacking command in in Calva. Maybe you don't know what the jacking is, so that's one of the features in in Calva is that you can start your project uh, uh, injecting the Calva dependencies on it from Calva. So if you, uh, you can start the project REPL and connect it with, with this. So that will actually construct the command line for you and then check in. And then it is more than just a command line. Uh, you can 
you can make customs, uh, custom um, uh, launchers and everything with it. And this feature is a bit, some, some experienced culturians think it's unnecessary, uh, but I have personally seen the difference between having this command and not having it. Again, the level of questions I get uh, in, in, in the support channels. So many questions about how, how do I get, start my project? Uh, and we needed to, to uh, do all this work with, uh, uh, with helping people uh, start their projects. And again, my worry was this top tip of the iceberg. iceberg. Uh, of course, how many people don't get their project started and give up? Uh, give up on closure to totally or, or just on Cal or whatever. Um, so this command has made a huge difference uh, when it comes to uh, uh, how easy it is to get started with Calva. So that was like the first step of this. And then I think it was like Alex Miller who said that that this this command is like the difference between guiding people to use the uh, the, the closure prompt in a terminal and actually having them start closure in their editor. So it's, that, that's the huge difference there is like the prompt is a bit of a dead end. You can try closure out and sort of, but it's not how you actually develop uh, closure code, right? Closure code is developed from the editor plugged in uh, to your application. So then uh, uh, I had that like in the back of my head a, a while. And then I realized that, yeah, we should fix all these, because the reason this is even a debate is that it has been so much work getting this jacking command working on Windows and it's still not working fully on Windows because of a Java bug. But uh, uh, we have, I don't know, I put so many hours into it. And, and then some people say, why are you doing that? This command is crap. Uh, but uh, uh, so, so uh, no, we should uh, put all this uh, time on fixing this, but we should also go further than that. We should we should do this uh, uh, real getting started uh, experience and help people really get started. So that's how it, that's how, how it was uh, uh, happened. Just uh, just uh, came to us anyway. Um, yeah, we can uh, return to, to that uh, if we want uh, uh, later, I think. Yeah, we, we could. Uh, um, demo more, but we can also continue speaking about little, about this way Calva is uh, getting the attention from us. Uh, then we, we can, we have, how much time do we have? Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. And if we have time, we can return to to Calva features if we want. So I want to talk a bit about uh, why Calva exists. I call it the Tau of Calva because I'm I'm a bit fascinated by by uh, some concept of this Tau. Um, so it is very much the reason uh, uh, we are providing Calva is because if you're using uh, VS Code and one are curious about closure, then you should be able to stay uh, with VS Code uh, to do that. You shouldn't be directed to uh, Emacs or someone somewhere, somewhere else at, uh, to, to investigate it. And there is something about this because no one, no one really, people debate editors a lot, but no one really cares about editors. They only care about their, their editor. I just uh, I looked a bit uh, on Clusure and Slack uh, on the different channels and, and the Emacs channel has uh, the most members, Cursive channel have a lot of members, then VS Code actually, of which Calva is, uh, is the biggest contributor. 
Space Max. I don't know if we put that in the Emacs bin or the Win bin. Uh, uh, and then there is an editor's channel uh, with uh, quite a few uh, uh, people uh, in it, but nothing. Okay. Uh, let's see. Nothing really happens in that channel. That's um, it's always like this. No one, no one talks about editors. Actually, <laughs> they might uh, on occasion just find a way. But uh, it's so. This is for when you care about your editor VS Code. That's why Kava. So, so that's a simple, simple answer uh, there. And then of course this. Uh, uh, that it is many newcomers to, to closure that come this way. So we want to ease that up. And then this is what guides uh, uh, me and I think Brandon as well, uh, to a large extent, uh, when it comes to what we want it uh, to, to be and to some extent what it already is. Then. So it should be really easy. Uh, to uh, to start, it's, it's, uh, this code is easy, so Calva should be uh, easy to start, and it should be this uh, this uh, uh, big closure hug. <laughs> uh, that's uh, that's what uh, that's what I want it to be, uh, and it should be of course easy uh, to use, but it should also be complete. So you don't have to put it away, and then start learning Emacs anyway, because uh, that's uh, that's where you have all the support. So it should be uh, 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 productive to stay with. Uh, and uh, yeah, I would say it is. I, I, I don't really miss so much. Uh, there are a few things uh, that I would like to add uh, to, to it, but it still uh, should be complete. And also, we have put a lot of work in making it super easy to hack on it. Uh, so it's not just that it's easy to hack on, on a VS Code extension. We have uh, tried to really uh, um, pack it down to a few commands and, and given the documentation and the help you can get from me and Brandon, it should, uh, uh, it should, it should be very easy. And it, so far, it looks like that people open an issues and then get, I tell them to, to make a PR and a few questions uh, later, maybe there is a PR there and, and we, we can pull in new features to Calva. So it seems to, uh, to, uh, to work. It's also be uh, reasonably uh, well documented. Uh, so we have this Calva IO site where you find documentation uh, on Calva, and yeah, it's it's not everything is not uh, it's not um, documented, but it is reasonably uh, good documentations. Uh, I would say uh, other uh, other people should uh, speak about that. And also one thing is that. We sometimes do the documentation first as like a way to develop Calva. I have an example of it here. So Calva, this jacking command, uh, we, we talk about it's not just uh, not just with jacking, also when you just connect to um, to a um, project. The projects look very different from each other, especially on the closure scripts and people have are very uh, innovative. <laughs> uh, so Calva has this way to support that in the way you can configure a custom, we call it a custom connect uh, sequence. And it was me and Kevin Albrecht who, uh, who designed this kind of a, over several weeks uh, uh, in, uh, in one hammock in, uh, in uh, Germany and one in Stockholm. Uh, we were uh, talking about this and I went down and I was uh, documenting it before it was built. So this is uh, uh, the feature re request telling how it uh, should work. And this is 
very similar to um, the documentation page we have uh, for it uh, today. So it, it was like built uh, uh, that way. Sometimes that works super, super well because it's so easy to uh, start hacking uh, uh, on it and creating something that doesn't really make sense. So looking at it first, that it makes sense from a documentation point of view, then implementing. It has, it's actually pretty uh, uh, straightforward then to make the first version uh, of this, of course. And after that, it's been a lot of more work on it, but the first version was pretty. That's also Kevin, uh, uh, to thank for that because he's very he's a very good uh, software arch architect I would say so can put together very very sound and maintainable uh, code bases so that was that's great. Another thing about Calva is that it should be uh, supported. You shouldn't be a Calva user and be on your own. Uh, so it's uh, 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 it's a, like a promise from from uh, from us that uh, uh, if you want uh, and need help, we are there. We want to uh, try uh, to help. And as I said so far, uh, the the way people ask for help and give us feedback and see it's so nice. It's just a, it's just a pleasure to being at the Calva support desk. I would say. And um, but in that, it's also super important that. It is, it is um, Brandon and I who have things at stake here, our time. Uh, 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 so it is, we, we are calling the shots here. So we, so it's, uh, uh, we listen intently uh, to feedback, uh, but, uh, it is it is not like driven like that it's not like someone says do this and we will uh, do it we 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 have a clear idea what calva should be and and uh, let the feedback guide guide us to to build what the users need but uh, yeah i don't know how I could I elaborate it but uh, uh, it is it is very easy that you try to make something that pleases everyone, and you end up pleasing no one. Uh, so that sounds like a cliche, but it's super true. Not so uh, uh, with, with Calva, I really hope. Another thing about Calva is that is this that it is complete. Um, it's very different, maybe, from what you can do like on Atom when you set up your closure environment and you pick and choose and read guides online about all these extensions that you should put together uh, and use to get uh, your, your online, online environment. But with Calva, you get it all in one um, uh, package. And also everything is configured uh, and start with defaults. So you just install the extension, fire up to getting started REPL and get going. Uh, so that's uh, how we want it to be. It's also, moving pretty fast, uh, I, I would say in changing uh, pretty fast. We have done some kind of dramatic changes on, 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 on the way. Uh, and sometimes we break things that uh, we don't have this move fast, break things uh, uh, model at all. We don't want to break things, but we want to move fast. Sometimes that actually happens. And both me and Brandon are pretty Trigger happy, I would say. Would you agree, Brandon? Um, so yeah, That's so so it, it happens. But so you can, if you look at the change log, you will see a lot of the items there are fixes because we also fix things uh, fast if we if we happen uh, to break them, and we also do this changing of things in knowing that we're dealing with humans. We're not building an API, right? It's it uh, doesn't need to be stable in that way. Pe people can adapt and they need to adapt if uh, they're gonna uh, be on this train because uh, it, it will be, uh, things will be changing. 
So, yeah, I can just I pasted the changelog here, but just to, to show you what we what we're talking about here. So this is the changelog uh, as of today, and uh, so this is for April. Uh, March, yeah, you get an idea, and it continues on here. And there is actually a huge gap here. For a very long time, we didn't maintain a uh, change log. And then uh, when Kevin Albrecht again um, joined, he insisted we must have a change log. So then we started again uh, maintaining uh, the change log. Um, and here, somewhere here, you will find the start uh, of uh, Calva based on visual closure, adding some features. But, uh, that's how it started. Um, yeah. So. Um, questions uh, on this? Uh, this is a bit about the stewardship of Kava, uh, of course. Do you wonder anything about uh, how we do it? Uh, or, uh, how often uh, are how often are releases made? Do you have a regular cadence, or is it sort of as needed? It is as needed. Uh, so this is a release. This is a release. This is a release. So just, uh, uh, I think that for me, it needs to be something in the change log in this under, under, under list here. This one has been there for, for a while because I've been personally been very busy with uh, preparing uh, presentations and stuff like that. So, but, but uh, otherwise, just need to be one thing in, in the change log. Uh, and I need to have time to take care of any fuck up. Uh, so for, for me, I, okay, I don't do it if I don't have like an hour of, of time uh, that I know I can spend on if, if something uh, uh, would, would break. So very long time ago that happened uh, last time, but uh, in the beginning it happened at, at times and this, uh, this decision to have this buffer saved, saved uh, things uh, a, a lot. Uh, not to have that. Uh, and yeah, I think uh, in, in this uh, Brandon and I are very much on the on the same uh, page. I think Brandon might want to release even more often sometimes. But uh, uh, a while ago, uh, Brandon spent some time on on our. Uh, uh, CI pipeline to to improve it so that it's because it was a few manual steps uh, to it before, but now it's it's a, so super easy uh, to release a new uh, version of Calvin just just fire one command and then um, then it happens and it's published on on the the base code marketplace and also on the uh, um, open uh, VSX marketplace, which is the Eclipse uh, Foundation's, uh, 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 which is Studio Code Extension uh, repository. So some of the open source uh, uh, versions of VS Code uh, use that repository instead to install. And also the change log is, uh, is updated and pasted in GitHub. So everything is very, uh, very smooth. Uh, I mean, when it comes to this. So it's it is easy to be a maintainer as well in that respect of Kalma. Say, say, stop me if you don't agree, uh, Brandon. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, yeah no, I, I agree. <laughs> I think we're on the same page there. <laughs> so how to hack on Calva then? So as 
we have this uh, uh, Tao of Kalva and, and text here uh, at the wiki. So here, a bit of what I have told you, uh, maybe with a few more or less words, I don't know. Uh, you can read about it there. And here you can also read on how to hack on Kalva. And yeah, some stuff here. I have summarized it here because uh, you start actually with uh, showing this uh, Calva channel on Slack. That's uh, what I prefer that people do and have a have a chat with us and see uh, if uh, uh, this feature is something that other people want uh, and if, uh, if you might need feedback on on uh, um, aspects of it uh, so it's, it's good start talking uh, uh, to us uh, about it but then mechanically it's just uh, we fork this uh, uh, repository you open it in VS Code, run one uh, command, two commands, because you can jack into the closure script part of it. And then you press S5, F5 to, to start a development extension host. And then you have a development version of Calvary running in one VS Code window. And then you can place breakpoints and start hacking on it. So it's, uh, I would say, it's super, super easy. For the TypeScript part of Calva, uh, you have the VS Code debugger, TypeScript debugger is a very powerful thing. Uh, and, but of course you need to restart uh, the development host for every change, which some, sometimes can be kind of painful, of course, but uh, that's the way it is in the TypeScript world. Uh, for the closest script parts, of course, you have the REPL. And of course, you don't need to restart stuff if you work there. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's very nice to to work in the closure script, and it's so nice to work in the closure script and those things uh, with Galva that both Brandon and I have spent an unreasonable amount of time to try to make more of Galva uh, to closure script, uh, uh, but it gets it gets uh, really really tricky in some of the um when you want to use this code stuff from in there some strange stuff happened i don't know how much time you spent last time uh brandon but it was a lot uh, uh, and but we got some of it done then uh i would say we moved the state stuff uh, in there and of course we learned a lot uh from from the experience but it yeah. uh, it is a no <laughs> uh to a large extent um yeah. Uh, can I you, show you? Oh yeah. Uh, when when you're working on Calva, how much do updates to VS Code or like um, tools in VS Code influence anything that you're you're working on in Calva? Like, are there any um, changes or updates to VS Code that happen that impact how Calva should be used or how you think about Calva interacting with VS Code? Yeah. That ha happens now and then. VS Code is uh, developed very uh, intensely. So it's, uh, I mean, I don't know how, how they do it. It's a lot of, of it is open source work as well. So it, it now and then very seldom things break, uh, at least. It, it happens uh, because maybe uh, we have cheated a bit uh, on uh, how we use the APIs. Uh, and also sometimes they actually break uh, the, uh, the APIs. So that also happens, but it's very it's very rare. But what you're asking here is, is more about uh, if, if this code adds a feature or changes a feature, uh, how, how does that impact? Sometimes we just get the change for free and even the feature uh, for free very much uh, uh, because of uh, closure LSP as well, which like uh, taps into to uh, this code feature more more directly and than Calva does, uh, I would say. Um, sometimes a small example is that you know this grow selection command that we have in Power Edit. Uh, 
like stru structurally grows uh, the, the collection. I could, I could maybe show it here. So if we are here and I type Control W, it will select the current form, and then it will select more uh, of this, uh, and then it will select and then and then the next, like that. and then you can shrink back to here. Um, and also, as I told you before, the other selection commands in Power Edit also grow and add to this uh, selection stack. This particular feature of uh, of uh, growing uh, uh, the selection was actually added to VS Code a while ago, maybe a year ago, less than a year ago. Uh, and then, of course, then then uh, some, uh, especially Windows uh users uh like so the, they have two commands for doing this and it looks like they do the same thing callus is of course much more structural uh than the built-in in, in this code is but still so then we changed uh, uh after much consideration we changed the keyboard shortcut for calvas uh uh, uh Expand selection command uh, on Windows. We change it to be the same as the built-in one. So we, in an essence, replaced uh, the the built-in one as long as you use the default uh, key binding. So that's one example. Maybe there are more, but it but it certainly happens uh, uh, now and then. That we need to navigate and uh, in that space. I always read uh, uh, the release notes. Excellent release notes that the Calva team. Uh, that uh, this code team um, produces for each release very carefully to see uh, what's uh, what has been changed, and they always tell you also what's in the pipeline, what's, what's coming, so we can so we can uh, prepare. There is one change coming soon. That is, um, it is a bit like the cookie banners you get on the web. So, so this code will start asking you if you trust uh, uh, the workspace uh, you are um, uh, you are working with, because this workspace could be from anywhere, and it could uh, end up uh, evaluating arbitrary code for you, uh, running an arbitrary code on your, on your computer. So then they have made this uh, 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 implementation where the user will have to answer this question, do I trust it, do I don't trust it? And if it's not trusted, then the extensions can have either a part of the extension get disabled, all of the extension still works, all of the extension uh, uh, is, uh, is disabled. And if you don't do anything as an extension developer, it will be disabled. Uh, in untrusted uh, workspaces. And I started to get worried about this getting started REPL then, because I said, okay, we'll run the getting started REPL and then get this uh, this prompt every time, that, that would be a bit horrible. So, I, so I, then I could uh, download the next version of uh, this code and enable this uh, feature and try it out. Um, turns out that we probably don't need to do anything. Uh, we will explicitly uh, make Calva like an un untrusted uh, extension, so it will be disabled in untrusted um, workspaces, uh, so that users can see that we have done that uh, on purpose. Uh, that that's how it should work. But otherwise, we don't need uh, to do anything there. But then, so in that case, not much we need to do, but some amount of work and time spent on figuring out if something needs to be done. So that's, we also have that, of course. Was that uh, an answer to your question? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Huh? Great. Um, more questions? I can show uh, you, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I have more questions. I don't know if we want to wait in, until the end for other questions or if you want to just take some now. Yeah, I'd rather have them now. Just, just, uh, okay, fire. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I, I guess, yeah, another thing that I, I've been thinking about during this, um, since I'm a new Clojure developer, I don't know too much about the whole Clojure e ecosystem and what tools um, more proficient developers use. So I'm a little curious how Calva has been influenced by other development tools that people use and like um, do the, the key bindings that, that Calva uses. Did you take those from, from other Clojure development tools or um, how has Calva been influenced by the rest of the Clojure ecosystem? Wow, that's a very, very good uh, question. Uh, the, the, um, let's see here. Don't know if you can. I don't know if you see this, but the first thing that uh, the Calvary me tells you that this is distilled from cider. So the reason it's named Calva is that when you do Calvados, you take cider and distill it. So that's um, why we call it Calva even. Uh, and it, it's not only, it's not only built from cider things. It's also super, um, uh, influenced uh, by how work, things works in cider. Also for how things works in cursive to some extent, but mostly from cider because that's what I was using uh, uh, before. So I wanted it to work like cider, I love cider. So I wanted it to work like cider. In, uh, in, so that's, a, that's the first level on that. Uh, that. So it's hugely influenced. And when it comes to the keyboard shortcuts, I took the sheet keyboard shortcuts from the uh, Emacs configuration that I was working with and thinking that that was uh, uh, like default uh, co common cider uh, shortcuts. It turned out actually that was the developers uh, uh, at that um, place had, that had made their configuration. Uh, but this was an attempt to bring the cider <laughs> shortcuts uh, uh, to to Calva, even if uh, it, it failed, and we have had so many uh, 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 discussions and suggestions and around keyboard shortcuts. Because if you if you look at it from just your perspective, like so, my computer, I would want that shortcut, and that shortcut doesn't work for me. It looks so simple. How can you choose these crazy shortcuts? Well, then. If you look at it from like all these perspectives, all kinds of uh, operating uh, systems, all kind of stuff going on on your computer, uh, uh, so everything, it's, it's just so complicated. You have uh, different uh, um, nationality uh, keyboards. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's impossible. That's super impossible. If you talk about pleasing everyone, that it's, it's not possible. Not if you want to have default uh, uh, shortcuts. And as you saw, we want it to be turnkey. So we won't have default uh, configuration for, for most things. And that has gotten us into to, uh, trouble because we have made wrong decisions. It's not just that, that it's hard to please everyone. You can also make wrong decisions. And then it, it, uh, it is a bit painful we talked about also about this that people can adapt, but adapting when it comes to keyboard shortcuts is a bit, uh, it's a bit hard. So when you do that, you, you cause a stir. So we we don't do uh, changes uh, we really nearly uh, we we really consider them, but sometimes we need to do them and and fix. So we did uh, a slight uh, adaptation uh, recently, and then at that time also. I took the opportunity to to make these evaluation commands as easy as you saw. They weren't weren't as easy before, actually. So, Alt Enter, uh, Control Enter, uh, Control Alt Enter. Yeah, that's uh, how you evaluate things. And I'm very happy that uh, I, I I made uh, that change, and that was also uh, received very uh, very well. So, not much friction there, but some other changes, lots of friction. Uh, 
And then when it comes to features, uh, it is a very good question because of just this thing you need to consider, because I was new to Clojure when I started this. I told you that I didn't know what I was doing when I released the first version of Calva. That's true, I didn't know. Uh, and then I got these expectations from very different kinds of um, users. Some new users like I am, they had expectations uh, from how VS Code worked or something like that and stuff like that. But also expectations from experienced Clojure users that knew how it should work. Like this is how, how Clojure IDE should work, Peter. Uh, and yeah, so it was hard uh, to navigate in, in, in that space, not knowing you have this knowledge deficit uh, uh, and, and still being this steward uh, of, of the thing. So it was, it's very easy there that you, you get uh, into uh, other people's uh, uh, driving uh, uh, your thing. So, but um, we managed to steer that pretty well uh, at that point still. Uh, but when it comes to the features, then of course it was like Cider has that feature. Uh, it it uh, People can make a super good case for why that feature is adding value uh, uh, to them in Cider. So of course we should bring it uh, to Calva. Curse about this feature, of course we should bring it uh, to, uh, to Calva. Uh, Pruter Apple has that feature. Of course, that one we couldn't implement, but but anyway, so it's uh, it's uh, ninety percent, uh, I would say, inspiration from uh, uh, from the other uh, environments, and then ten percent is our contribution, uh, and we have seen stuff from Calva spread out to both cider and. I don't know how much uh, to curse it, but Colin Fleming has has straight out asked me if he can use this um, our like uh, the connect sequence uh, thing that I showed you, if he could take inspirations uh, still, if uh, like with permission from from Calva there. So yeah, lately I would say we're starting to 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 more cross pollinate, uh, but but. Uh, the simple answer is that all of it is inspiration from other places. Is that yeah, that's an really answer? Awesome. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, that's really great to know. Uh, yeah, just uh, holler if you have questions. Uh, don't wait to the end. <laughs> uh, I want to show you this um, uh, if we have time. Uh, this uh, closure document thing. Uh, uh, as I said, it's a full, full featured text document model, uh, and it has it consists of um, this. So you can change and and, and update this uh, this uh, document if, if you call it. But it's also built on on a on a lexer closure closure lexer. Uh, and that's a bit what you see down here. And then it has something called, that we call a token cursor. I don't know what it is called from, from the beginning, but it's a very old thing from the late seventies, I think. Zedamax Z, Z, uh, had it first, I think maybe on the, on the Lisp and symbolic uh, hardware. Uh, uh, so it's a, it's a thing that you can send around in the structure of, of your document. Uh, it behaves a lot like Power Edit. So Power Edit is built on top of it. Uh, and uh, this closure document integrates into VS Code as this two-way mirror that I told you about. Uh, so you can like change, change uh, the, this document and the VS Code document will update and then you can do it vice versa. So, so uh, uh, Sometimes you might see that it gets out of sync. Uh, so, th so, that, so, so that happens. But since you know this now, that, that is how it's work. You know also then it's actually just to close 
close the, the, the file and open it again and it will heal itself. It powers so much of, uh, of, of calculus. Very often you need to know what the current form is. And if you want to evaluate code, whatever you want to do, it's an it's a important content, uh, concept. So this lexer then tokenizes uh, the, the, the document when you open it line by line. And yeah, the regexes look like this. Uh, so it's very, I would say, it's snowing outside. Um, uh, it's very um, loose, I must say. This is not uh, very, it's not taken from the documentation. This is a symbol uh, in, in, uh, in uh, actually, this is the symbol. We call it ID. Uh, so it takes it, takes anything that looks like a symbol is a symbol, but you need to do it with great care, of course. But um, uh, so um, these uh, regexes sometimes when there is a problem with them can take a long time to fix them. As you can see, it's uh, uh, you would want this uh, kind of tool that uh, uh, regel, I think it is. Uh, uh, I don't know if, if one exists for for similar to that for for uh, JavaScript, but uh, anyway. So that's uh, that's the first thing that happens. It's just like it tokenizes everything, scans the document and tokenizes, and then it creates this token cursor. Uh, and this is the thing that knows about cursors. So it's very it's different from a plain. Uh, AST. Are you familiar, familiar with an AST? As, as, asymmetric syntax tree, as I think it's called. It's uh, how you usually uh, represent uh, um, code uh, as a structure. But then it's a tree. This is not a tree. This is an array, uh, and of 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 these tokens. And then then we have code that can navigate in this uh, in in this array. So this is how we send this cursor forward one form, this expression form. And it takes a, a, a bit of uh, uh, um, configuration, you can call it, in, if you should give commands and metadata, stuff like that. And then it does this, so it's a case switch, of course. Uh, we won't go into the details, but it's super important that this one works because nothing in Kava works if this one doesn't work. Like it's a, it's a, like a primitive thing uh, in Kava. And then the tests for for forward expression. Uh, so you can look at it from that end. I have invented this <laughs> syntax here for. For uh, for creating uh, these closure documents easily, so then I put uh, a pipe uh, uh, bar where the cursor is, and then I get a new document which has a selection at that point. It it, it can also express uh, start and end of expressions of, of selections and stuff like that. But at the simplest, it is just a cursor in in the document. And then I have two of these documents, and then I send this cursor forward once expression and check that is it is at a new place. So then I did this pretty recently, actually. The tests for this was horrible before, uh, but this uh, this is to me at least super easy to 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 uh, to do. And if we get an issue. Uh, on something not misbehaving in structural editing or anything like that. In the issue, we say, oh, you mean it should work like this? And then we put two things like that before or after. And then I can just paste them in uh, and, and, and make the test and see that it doesn't work and then fix it. So it's, uh, I think I have it. So these are 
well, many of these are tests of the token cursor. So if one central one, as we saw, was this uh, uh, forwards expression, of course. Another one is this current form uh, where we have. So what is the current form? As I said, it's, it's where the cursor is beside, but it is a bit more than that. So it follows kind of a, um, in priority, uh, what, what it should consider a current form. And this, this code here then uh, tries to ensure that it, it, it works like that. So this, uh, um, I'm using jest. Uh, uh, I don't know if you have been writing unit tests in, in uh, JavaScript before. Totally recommend Jest. And I'm also using something else for, for generative testings. And this generative test, uh, testing is also mostly on the scanner, uh, the Lexer. And it has caused us a lot of uh, friction uh, in the CI pipeline when it generates something. Uh, but it's so valuable because found stuff that uh, sh sh should work. Uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, of generative testing, but it's like, it's just, it takes uh, some judgment on when to apply it. When it comes to this lexer, it's when you should apply it, <laughs> uh, definitely. Uh, this is the race six expression command. Uh, so what it should do, is if, let's say this is the current form, bus here. If I now raise, it should replace the surrounding form with this one. So if I raise, the surrounding form disappears and this replaces it. And if I raise from here, the same thing uh, happens. Um, so then if we look at the implementation uh, uh, for that using the token cursor, I think it, it sort of um, illustrates very well how powerful this token cursor uh, is. So we get a race expression. It takes as an argument this editable document we've been talking about and where the cursor is in, in, in that document. We create a, a cursor here, and then we call this range for current form, the one that has showed you tests for, right? What is the current form? Uh, so that so then we get uh, this range of the form where um, I was designed this, uh, this uh, quote bar uh, symbol. So then, form start and form end will be surrounding that. Right? And then we uh, uh, send the cursor to the start of this. And uh, then I clone it in to get uh, the end cursor, which I then send forward uh, uh, once expression. And uh, then I move both this cursor out of this, the surrounding form and have have the full uh, surrounding formula, and then I replace that one with the text of the of the, the middle one. And this is where I talk about this uh, editable model here. I can I can uh, 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 fire off commands like this on it, so it it replaces uh, everything between these cursors with the text that we have picked out here. And then it's important to place the cursor at uh, an unsurprising place after the, the, uh, the selection. So lots of uh, tweaking there when it comes to where is the cursor after I've done this, because if it is in the wrong place, it, the command gets totally confusing. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I just want to sh sh show you this and I actually, almost like when it comes to bug uh, reports on on uh, this kind of code because it's so fun actually to to uh, to uh, work with it and also of course if we can feature requests on it i i can i can uh, often rearrange and do that things that because it's much more fun that's, that's a 
um, like a privilege of an open source uh, developer that you can just pick pick the thing that we think is most fun and work with that one. Um, it's not always true, but uh, very often. This is fun. Uh, I totally love working with this cursor. You should uh, work more with it, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was what I had prepared. Kind of fascinating, you. some of the, the specifics about how you're implementing that. Had you worked with editors or IDEs or dev tooling before? Uh, yes and no. Uh, so I had, I always uh, tweaked uh, and, and extended uh, my dev environments. Uh, and also if I we worked, we worked with uh, Python at some place and I had used Eclipse and uh, I automated stuff and, and did an, I don't know, called plugin in Eclipse, right? Work, the support our workflow and stuff like that. But this this particular kind of thing is on the low lowest level there. So it's actually not uh, I who has uh, done this uh, to, to begin with. And there was a, a developer uh, who joined, I think it might have been, maybe some year, after Kala was released, uh, he joined for, for um, um, during a Christmas uh, uh, season. And he wanted to, co to contribute with, uh, uh, to Kala. We started to talk and, and he, he, in the matter of, I think it was two months, he added so many things. Uh, 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 You're talking to, about Christian? I'm talking about Matt Seddon. Oh, Matt said it. Uh, yeah, so he, he created this uh, uh, cursor, uh, co uh, closure document, the, the lecture, the token cursor. He made the first uh, uh, version of uh, Kelly Jack in. Uh, I can go on, actually. So he added uh, a, a lot of, of this kind of stuff. But then he left. I couldn't get hold of him. So I had this code base that I didn't understand. It was pretty horrible actually. Uh, but uh, I had of course uh, to, to start understanding it. And, and uh, yeah, there was a few months there of hard work for me to, to get uh, up and, and figure these things out. And today I say that maybe 60% maybe of the code there is mine. Uh, 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 today, uh, so it's vastly improved from what what he uh, left in there. But it, it is the kind of uh, it's a very good question because it's it's, it's it's the kind of thing that uh, is it's not obvious that you that you know how to do. And I certainly wouldn't have known how to to do it from scratch uh, myself. Then um, it's it's fascinating uh, this uh, token this token cursor thing, and it's so fun to. To, to see and sometimes you find some manual, old computer manual that talks about this token cursor. And you can dive into the Emacs code and find this uh, token cursor thing inside there. It's, uh, it's, I think it's so, so super fascinating. And, and it's, uh, when you work with it, you realize how, how smart it is. The, 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 it's a simple thing, but it's so smart. And I can, when you, when you, um, let's see here, you see these rainbow uh, parents uh, we have here, right? So if we go into closure core here, so this is 8,000 lines of, of closure code. And this token cursor is running through this code, telling me what color uh, each uh, uh, bracket. Uh, should have, or which level? I figure out the color, but uh, uh, so I can color it up. And as I scroll, it you can see it because in the big file you can see that it happens, but the cursor is actually running through the whole uh, thing every time, right? Uh, so it's uh, yeah, it's uh, as I say, it's super fascinating uh, tech actually. 
you can I think you can see it sometimes on some lines you can see how I only actually color the thing that you see. Uh, so sometimes you can also notice that 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 if you have several uh, closure files open, it can miss uh, and, and something because of because of if I would do it on the full file every time, then the actual coloring of thing, of things would take. I still need to like go through the whole file, but actually update just just the thing that's invisible uh, in the visible pane. So it's uh, it's super uh, efficient as well. It's uh, it's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, we're on uh, overtime and I can stay. Uh, it's uh, early morning here because the um, <laughs> sun has risen. So we, we see the we see the lake. Yeah, it's a great view. Yes, we do. Yeah, so it's uh, it's uh, getting. Yeah, if we would have been like two weeks ahead, it would be it's so beautiful up because then all the trees are green and stuff like that as well. So it's. Uh, but it's um, very nice. But as, as I said, I, I, I can stay if you have uh, uh, more questions or something more you want me to show or whatever. That's no problem. Uh, I, um, I have like one or two more questions. Um, why did you okay. choose to be working on Calva? And like, how, how did you um, kind of choose this as your, your project to be working on? outside of work. Yeah, so that is very much, um, uh, you see, you asked two good questions. Um, that's very much due to the closure community, I would say. Uh, so to begin with, it was uh, that, uh, as I said, my computer didn't uh, like uh, Emacs. I did, I liked Emacs, my computer did. Uh, and so I need, and but I did like uh, VS Code. I found VS Code and really liked that uh, environment, and wish I could use it. So I was just making it to give myself a uh, better closure environment to VS Code. That was the start. But then it was very, very quick, uh, very soon, that you know the downloads just uh, happened. I think. So, so Linus Eriksson, uh, my the guy who taught me closure to begin with, he uh, he threw like a party on uh, at the office when he saw that it was uh, thousand downloads on on Calva, and that was that was very quick. And so then I was a product owner. Remember, <laughs> I was not a coder really. Uh, so then that product owner in me woke up. Uh, really okay, so I have users, <laughs> super. Uh, so, so then I started to try to to treat it as a product, but then also uh, I got so many, uh, um, so much encouragement from from the closure uh, community, who also saw this that this code was coming. It wasn't as had didn't have the market share it has now, but it, everyone can see what was happening. And so they were super interested in that VS Code had this uh, uh, support. And uh, Botsidar Batsov uh, helped me a lot in, uh, in the beginning, as did a lot of other people from, from the dev tooling community uh, uh, to do this. So that it actually was like a feedback loop that was super addictive and rewarding. I would say that's uh, that's uh, why uh, I started to really do it. Uh, so it was uh, the way my effort was received uh, in the community, really, that uh, made the difference and made me decide that uh, I I should commit uh, to it. Yeah, I think that's uh, that almost the full story. <laughs> mm -hmm. More questions? If there are no more questions, I think I don't want to hold Peter any further <laughs> than it's, it's, it's too late. I'm, I'm just uh, I'm not going to bed anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank
thank you. That's, this is wonderful. And it really seems like an important resource, you know, resource for new people learning closure. I know VS Code is, is really popular where I work as well. And I, I know a few Python devs I'll be pointing this out to and see what they think. Uh, so thank great. you for your work. Yeah, because that was the thing I would uh, like to like uh, send with you uh, that would be super if each one of you found uh, one uh, uh, closure uh, uh, beginner, someone you want to uh, use closure. And if they use VS Code, uh, show them uh, this uh, getting started REPL. And uh, uh, very much for me and Brandon, uh, just to get the feedback uh, from you on how how it how it uh, goes and fares. So, so you know it's uh, it's a bit uh, you're a bit in the blind when it comes to to this. You only see the questions you get. You don't see the questions you don't get. So it's uh, that's, um, that would be super if we, you would take on that task. Yeah, I know um, for the people from Amperity here, um, we, uh, well, I, I started relatively recently. So I've been using Calpa and it's been super helpful for me. And we added it to our like VS Code getting started guide. So if you're getting started as a new hire and you don't know Clojure, um, we recommend that people start using Calpa. So, so you have a couple of okay. people in your corner rooting for Ah, you That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. How does it? Uh... How does it work on your projects? How has it been like easy to get it uh, working with your projects? Uh, yeah, because yeah. you have a big uh, mature code base there, I guess. Uh, yeah, I would say for me, it's worked relatively well. Um, I haven't had too much feedback from the other people at Imperity that have been using it. Um, I know that they, from what I've read on our internal Slack channels, it seems like people have been enjoying it, um, and, mm -hmm. and I enjoy it, and it works pretty well. So, yeah. Okay. Super. Yeah, we we've, we've been drumming up uh, pretty much for the at least for the new joiners at VS Code because uh, Cursive was the one to uh, go to for a long time because um, Vim has its own steep ramp, Emacs had its own steep ramps. Yeah. Uh, IntelliJ was something yeah. that was like type and run. And yeah, now exactly. VS Code is there, so it's it's yeah. I'm pretty sure we are, we are only going to see a bump of bump up of the users because I'm pretty sure I didn't know Calva could do a couple of things until you showed me today. Like <laughs> run up to the line and like evaluate that line. That was that was really cool because I mean what I do is I just comment those lines out and run the whole form because yeah, I've yeah. been using Vim and I'm uh, I'm stupid. So you I might that. have that. <laughs> uh, you might have that. Uh, uh, command in there. Uh, you look for it. Uh, so, I mean, there are so many com commands inside these tools. <laughs> uh, so it's, uh, but if, if it is that, they should, of course, uh, highlight it a bit uh, earlier uh, because it, it is a super useful command. Yeah. Cool. Um, I was, I'm super happy to hear that uh, you uh, learned uh, stuff uh, today about uh, uh, what what uh, Calva uh, can do. Was uh, I'm not kidding? It it uh, a while ago I was hit by it myself. I'm just uh, what is uh, I even wrote it on a Reddit thread. Uh, we started an ask me anything uh, thing on Reddit. Uh, me and Brandon. And then I commented somewhere that I don't know how it happened. How all of, like all of a sudden it, it is uh, this like uh, almost uh, complete is wrong word, but it's it's very it 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 has uh, it has the important uh, features and uh, can really be used uh, real time. And I don't know when that happened uh, and how. And then Colin Fleming. Uh, the maker of cursive uh, commented on my on my comment there and uh, answered it. <laughs> so that was uh, uh, I, I know how it happened, Peter. <laughs> so that was that was really nice. <laughs> uh, it is a super uh, amazing community. Right. Yeah. I mean, if anyone has anything else to say, or if, if not, we'll. Uh... I will 
love to let Peter go have his dose of caffeine before he gets started for his, uh, the real day. <laughs> yeah, the work day. Yeah, it was super uh, fun uh, to be here. Uh, uh, thanks a lot, Kailash, for, for uh, inviting me. It was, uh, I really liked it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks yeah, a lot, thank Peter. So much. Thanks Peter for sharing great. your Thanks for sharing your passion with the with us, and look forward to seeing you probably sometime again in the future. Yeah, that would be nice. That would be nice. I yeah. still have to uh, visit uh, the east east coast of uh, of the US. Yep, when flights are a thing again. Mm. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Light. Super. Bye. Bye. You have a great Bye. rest of the day. Thank you. Bye, everyone.